stars. Stars, alright. I'll, I'll link you my friend ID. Yeah, yeah, I'll add you. That's the... I didn't copy it. <laughs> I'm saying that's the name. Alright. Alright, I was gonna send you... And uh, yeah, tell me a bit about yourself, like how long have you been playing? How... I started playing in uh, 2014. I calibrated 1.4k. And... I uh, climbed a lot. Yeah, that's quite the grind. Played thing, mostly, bro. yeah, played mostly Meepo, <laughs> and uh, I got to six point nine k in the old MMR system. And uh, nice, nice. Now I feel uh, now I'm trying to like branch away and not not be a Meepo spammer anymore for like the past year year and a half. Uh huh. And uh, it's been going okay. I just haven't really I haven't gained MMR, but I haven't like lost substantial amounts of MMR. Mm -hmm. So. It's not that it's not that bad, but I feel like all my like this. Uh, if this if it, if this 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 wasn't my original account, it's like only level fifty one. I made it with the intention of uh, not not p picking Meepo like pretty much at all. But then I got bored a lot because I, I really enjoy the hero, so I still ended up picking it four hundred times. But <laughs> it's, yeah, okay. it's, it's a lot less than how much I usually pick it. I see. So. Oh wait, um, okay, actually you're gonna have to add me because uh, it's a bit complicated, I have some pending requests and I can't... Oh, yeah. I, just, I have 71 pending, I just realized. Yeah. I, don't know how to I don't know how you decline all of them. If you... I think there's a button, like, below I couldn't find it. Right, if, you can, if you can add me here, I send you send my ID. Or actually, I can just invite you to party, that's easier. And then... Right, I added you too. Okay. Okay, gotcha. All right. So, okay, that's, I should be able to see your when it refreshes. I can see your recent games. I'm on a lost streak. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, that's... Okay, they're not loading right now. I think there's some server issues, as I'm, usual. Uh, but I played. I played when I was really sick. I had like 103 fever or something like that. Damn. I have the flu, and uh, I kept I kept just like losing and playing bad. All right. Um, just six. Sorry. Okay. So. Still, like the majority of matches are with Meepo, you're saying? And uh, uh, not, not, not the on this account. It's not the majority. Okay, not, like, not anymore. Okay. Yeah, not the majority. And so I see you're playing a lot of OD, trying yeah. some other like you classic mid heroes, Queen of Pain, some Pugna. Yeah, Pugna, Pugna just seemed like a good pick in those games. So I picked it. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely. Actually, that's one of my favorite heroes. All right. So, okay, so, I don't know if you, you said you've done some coaching before, um, I guess best thing to do, like, for the first session is just uh, go over a replay. Yeah. If you have some replay in mind, it's like kind of a close game, you can take a look at. Um, I have to think of one, because, I mean, there's a Shadow Fiend game, but... <laughs> I'm not, I think it, I think it was mostly just my item decisions that lost us the game. You can look at it if you want, but I'm not sure. Hmm. Let's see the shopping game. I mean, it's uh. You tell me right, like it's it's mostly yeah, it's about. Put in the party. Put in the party chat. Uh huh. Yeah, I found it's the the 26 minute game, right? Or. Yeah. Yeah. I. I want to look at a Shadow Fiend replay, but I haven't been playing it recently that much because I keep mm. losing. Okay, I mean then I suppose I don't know, this I don't one... know what it is. I keep losing. It's um, I mean the hero is definitely a little bit misunderstood, I would say, even though it's very strong. Uh, and it's also not really a. Well, the biggest thing really is that. Like the pop play style, if you're trying to kind of, you know, have a guaranteed solo impact, whereas you're not really counting on teamwork too much. Uh, which, I mean, it depends like how it is 
in your bracket. Like I say for myself, like some games, you know, it's it's it works out to play like team dependent heroes. Uh, and when I say team dependent, I mean heroes that you know, like you need the team to go with you, like a DK or a Death Prophet, because uh, you know what they're strong at is grouping up and pushing towers, forcing fights. Um, and you know, if your team is like on the same page, like that can work out. But if they're not, and you just end up being alone, like you, the hero doesn't really work. So when it comes to Shadow Fiend, <clears throat> if you play him with the physical damage build, he ends up being pretty similar to those. Uh, not the exact same, of course, because you still <clears throat> you farm faster, uh, you have higher move speeds or more mobile. Not that easy to get, you know, like with DK if you're out of position, you're generally just dead. Um, so it's not that similar, but but still, like it, it kind of functions the same way. And if you want to be able to like get more done on your own, um, like the first big thing is that you you don't have any solo kill potential uh, without items for it, right? Because you have um, the, the the hero has no disable, so pretty much your options are like in order to be able to play quote unquote alone or like apply pressure solo, you need an item that gives you like solo kill potential, so that enemies are scared because um, with regular build uh, like for example the items you have here like this this is the kind of build where you kind of need your team to go with you because you can't really get anything significant done on your own like even a bane can make you run away because he's just gonna sleep you someone's gonna tp and you're dead so yeah, even this if game, I, I was itemizing this game for uh for kind of like high ground defense and team fighting because the, the mm -hmm. game was Really badly for a large majority of it. Yeah. So, so. I, I, I didn't really think making like solo plays was a good idea. I bought the Pike, mostly just like kind of it kind of helps you with split pushing, but also helps you with team fighting. Mm -hmm. but, like it's really useful versus the Chug and the DK. And the drum, the drums is just like a, a another like team fight item. Well. Yeah, it's just, I mean, the item is attractive, but it's just, uh, like, it has all those issues, like, I'm, like, the other problem with, with Pike, especially early on, is that you, it is 5k gold, almost, and it does give, like, a little bit of everything, and it's kind of nice, like, nice active, and, like, some, some damage, some tank, some regen, this and that, but at the end of the day, like, it doesn't really, it's not a damage item, and it is, again, like, so much gold um and really the biggest change that made me personally shy away from pike when i used to get it all the time was that uh basically uh the cooldown nerf because that was like a big uh big reason right like four staff used to be 20 pike was 15 i believe and then i made four staff 23 and now pike is also 23 so you're actually not really like when it comes to active you're not really gaining that much upgrading from force to pike because the cooldown is the same and and obviously the, the added bonus of like being able to push someone i feel like that's such a niche thing like only very relevant on versus certain heroes on certain heroes like yeah because yeah. 99 percent of the time you're using it just on yourself so <clears throat> but anyway we, let's take a look at the replay uh, yeah but yeah, so, uh, so the, the main point that I was making is, uh, like, there is the Shadow Blade for Physical Damage SF, which kind of does that thing, but it, again, it's just one sentry and it defeats the purpose. Uh, but that's I where... Wanted, I really wanted to buy Shadow Blade this game, but I felt like I couldn't get away with it. I needed some, uh, some escape item. Yeah. Because I really wanted the Silver's Edge for DK. And I felt like it'd be really useful in fights, like knock the songs, and then I can like Shadow Blade behind everyone or like ulti, do something like something like something like this. But I, I I wasn't I didn't think I could get away with it. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, let me just share a screen. Now I should be able to see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. Serious game. Um. All right, so generally, the like the main point I'm trying to make is that uh, if you wanna have like a bigger solo impact, the magic build actually ends up being stronger in a lot of cases, and 
Like, that's why it's a little bit deceiving, and I really feel the heroes misunderstood. Because, first of all, uh, well, I don't know if you watch pro games. Uh, I do a bit. Yeah, well, generally there, he is uh, played with, rarely with magic build. Pretty much always it's the same, like, standard uh, treads, drums, Akela, BKB, and then whatever. And the reason for that is, like, you know, the pro teams, I mean, their teams, they play around the SF much better, and you don't really need. Like that eliminates the need for a lot of things. Um, but yeah, the way pops function is it's a lot about being able to apply that solar pressure and like you know showing waves, um, and that's where it's not even so much about you know what type of damage you're dealing. It's just that uh, the Yules is a perfect item for that. And when you have Yules, then I mean you might as well go magic because I missed my block. Yeah. I was like I was a. Uh... Uh, uh, this, yeah. this is one of the games I play when I was sick, so... Yeah, I mean, it, that's... That's what I no, no need to... I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit through lane stage. See if anything really weird happens, but... I mean, I, I don't need to explain to you, like, hitting creeps or whatever. <laughs> or you should get this last hit. That doesn't make you better. I have a lane stage salvaged. He actually oh, didn't... I didn't, get, I didn't get I didn't get any of the kills. Oh, not salvaged that's, at all. That feels bad. Okay. So it's yeah. not that great, but at least got a bunch of items. And my courier died too. Lane equals lost. Now there's a Bane. This Bane, uh I had him in earlier games and I carried him like really, really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And then he was on my team and he picked Feno and I flamed him for picking Feno off thing because I thought that it was really bad. And then now he's just like following me around and he's mad at me. <laughs> yeah. But still, I mean, it's... When he wins, too. It's 4-0 if I look at, you know, other lanes are also going quite well, so it's not, not too bad. Um... So I'm your software you're keeping up. Oh, I can say a small thing about this is... Uh, I messed up the race stacking. That's gonna be... I mean, not just that, but like, there's... So right now there's uh, the yellow Ursa and the two centers that both give magic resist. So the way you use raises right here is like, all three raises are being reduced by all three of these. Now, I mean, obviously the, the yellow Ursa has a lot of HP, but... These small centaurs are super squishy, so what you kind of want to do is, uh, I mean, definitely after two raises, like, it takes one hit to kill both of these, and then the, the third raise is going to do way, way more damage, because each of these reduces by 20, it's it's a lot. Yeah, um, oh, yeah. And I was thinking, I, I knew I messed up as soon as I did it. Yeah, because, I mean, all these are, like, more half. Or, I mean, the way I generally do it is, like, I use one raise to aggro them, and then as they're running towards me, I just uh, attack the small ones, kill them with hits. Takes like 5 seconds, but not... It's like quick enough so that you don't lose the, the race stacks on the others. Yeah. And as soon as you kill the centers, you raise the rest. So you went for uh, some kind of max orb build. Yeah. Just purely to pressure on the lane, but it doesn't give him any ability to farm much. I kind of just said he's not gonna farm very quickly inside of the lane, so I'm gonna struggle and trade farm and it'll scale faster that way. Yeah. I'm not sure why I didn't finish the wand. I might as well. Okay, he I actually comes for the kill. Yeah, I didn't think he had ulti skills. Yeah, I mean, like, I can't really okay. say it's a huge mistake to die because the only thing is maybe you should have raindrop, but. Like, his entire build is just focused around making that one play, and it's kind of odd, but yeah. I didn't finish my wand because uh, I feel like you jungle faster with the dreads and fight better for now. Mm -hmm. I finished the wand eventually. Has been 
guess I speak well. I mean, if you look, actually, they are have a gold lead, which is kind of odd, but because I mean, I assume they're getting a lot more CS on lanes, yeah. Especially the jug is having a great time, and Jaro is always going to top lane didn't do better. I mean, uh, Jaro versus DK, like Jaro already has damage issues, and DK with the fire makes it very hard for him to last hit. So let's say, I mean, at this point, it's just about applying some pressure. Set up. So you know what the team making nice moves. Now this would be a great time to go for mid tower. Like you wanna, um, I really don't understand this because you, so you TP two heroes, SK, Gyro, Nagas already there. You run there, make a four hero rotation. You get, you know, you kill two. Like all that is great, and then your four heroes. Why not hit the tower? Then everyone just leaves. Like Gyro goes top, you go bot. And tower takes zero damage. By the yeah, the tower takes zero damage though, and it's just like the yeah, skills that were great suddenly are like, what's the point? Because like the hope, obviously, the point of getting those kills is to be able to pressure or like, take an objective after. And what's the point of uh, of getting the kill if you don't get anything out of it? And here, same with the jug. Like, all right, say you kill the jug. Like, it's it's not a high percentage kill, but say it happens. Like what's what's the point when the wave is here and then you're also far from mid? You, know, like, you want to be actually getting objectives. Like that's, that's what matters. Yeah. So here you kill two, but don't have much mana after you go for some stacks. And then me, I'll lose my tower. Like see, like the jug is he's going for battle fury. I mean, he did get some early items, right? But he's just going for tower. So. Like actually this whole move top is like, it might seem, you know, oh you TP, you get a double kill, the penguin also dies, you lose the gyro, but yeah, you're like, you're TPing, you lose the gyro and you lose the mid tower, like, I mean the tower is what matters, so, and if you look at, like that's why, like this is the issue, it's like you have too much focus on kills, because, alright, you're 8-1, but you're still like way way behind the jugger and also behind the OD and that's big part of that is them having two towers and your team having zero so I think it's this one thing I messed up a lot because I focused too much on kills yeah so like that's really the in the early game it was fine because like okay you were recovering from a hard lane just farming woods like that's okay but as soon as you get some basic items up is when you want to start focusing on pressing lanes. Alright, like, let's take this example. Let's watch... Uh, I mean, we are on, on the Dire perspective. So, this is where you decide to TP. I mean, okay, let's look first at your player perspective. See what, that's like a small thing. Let's see how much you actually checked about what was going on. Everyone's waiting for that Right. So you don't actually click on anyone first, right? You just... You see a bunch of dots, and you're like, alright, it's a fight, I'm TPing. So... Alright, grip was used. But as you're TPing, like this, okay, this is when you start TP. Let's look at what's actually going on. Or, if you click, what you could have seen. So first of all... Um, okay, battle is dead. That's always... Uh, there's an OD chaining there, OD... Doesn't have four staff, whatever, but he's full HP. Uh, your SKT Pete, no blink, all six, has some spells. Uh, Bane is chilling, Naga is chilling, Naga. Low mana, pretty, pretty crucial point because you can only use one spell instead of three or four. Meanwhile, DK and Jug are getting the tower. So, uh, oh yeah, and Gyro was TP's on cooldown, so he, he's chilling bottom. Um, so, I'm gonna say, like, before actually looking at what happens, like, there are basically a couple possible outcomes, right? So, let's start with best case scenario. You know, somehow magically everything goes perfect. Let, let's just say Naga has full mana or whatever. I mean, see, the thing is, like, realistically, there's there's no way you kill both these heroes. Um, 
because you just don't have the like Odi walks away, you only have the disable to, to lock down one of them, and it's gonna be Bane because Odi's too far. So realistically, you only kill Bane. But but I mean even let's say like somehow you also kill Odi. Best case scenario, you, you kill both of them. You don't use any ults or whatever. Uh you get these two kills, you still lose a tier one in the meantime. Takes at least ten seconds, right? And they, they're gonna take the star in less than ten seconds. You still lose a tier one. Midwave is pushed to your tier two. And top wave is super pushed past the tier one because it just died. You're gonna have to de-push this top lane, but it's a bit hard against the Jug and the DK with Dragonform. Like they're they're pretty strong right now. Jug is a level two only slash. So you can't really push top, and you're gonna have to run mid pretty much. Or you're gonna have to sit here and wait for the creeps to come. Uh, but it's better to run mid, obviously, right? You don't wanna waste time. So and that that's best case scenario. So best case scenario is like you losing a tower and getting two kills and then being forced from the lane still. Well, that doesn't sound very good, right? And what makes it worse is that you're actually in a pretty great spot to, you know, do something better, which is pressure this tier 2. Because, like, they're all there. Uh, you just took a tower, you're getting some momentum with the wave, right? Like, you have triple range creep. You're gonna raise this wave, and you're gonna start hitting that tier 2, and then then no matter what happens here you're actually like getting some building damage going uh you might force the dk or the jug back then when you tp like one of them is not there so you can actually shove this wave out um you know you actually have the gyro with you both of you have kind of the same items but you know you can pop some drum charges to hit tower faster with the creeps as well like a pretty good chance of getting this tower and then you know you might trade a tier one for a tier two which is way way better than whatever is going to happen here and uh, and lastly you know the most important thing is that you're making them tp instead of you being the one that's tping um i mean this is like a whole like a general rule of tps i can i can explain a bit more about that later but let's just say about this move so so let's see what actually what happens you're so nice you messed up though. So you yeah, up on this, you don't kill the OD, you actually don't even get the Bane. And then both pushes die. Oh, okay. Clutch song, you survive with 10 HP. But really what is the difference between you dying and surviving here? Like, okay, you don't lose money and instead of being dead for what 30, 40 seconds, you're gonna spend 15 walking here and another 15 walking to mid. So uh you know difference, you know is very very small because you still lose this tower uh you still don't have a tp you were forced away from the stop lane you didn't get any kill and now gyro is the only one pushing bottom so uh od can solo tp to the in fact catches him he might end up dying and top tower also takes damage So you see where like this build also the reason it's not working is because enemies got so far ahead from the lanes uh, that like even though your lineup is pretty good, 14 minutes bat has no blink. You lost all tier ones, and like these five on fives that are like should be happening ideally with the drums. Like that's ideally, you know, like five on five you pop drums. And then you have like your Requiem Jar ult with some stunts or whatever. Like that's the ideal fight for you. But like those 5 fives are just not really happening. So okay, okay, let's an another situation where you're something is happening and you're TPing. Here it actually gets cancelled by DK because it's so slow. The last second. Yeah. But again, though, it's it's pretty much the exact same situation, except it's here and not at your shrine. But so, like, what what is it's a bottom shrine instead of top shrine? Like, imagine it didn't get cancelled. Like, what what's the best case again? All right, you kill the OD, who, by the way, like if he survives, he probably survives whether you're there or not. And if he dies, he dies whether you're there or not, because like the disables have been used, and he has a. Like, your team doesn't really lack damage without you, and damage is the only thing you offer, basically, so... So 
so yeah, he dies regardless. The Bane is running in. Chuck is running in. And now... And now we're just running in. But you walk past the creep wave, like... Even if it's an amazing fight and you wanna like... Make some, like, you should definitely raise this wave, because... No matter what happens in the fight, like, at least you're shoving mid a bit and... You're gonna do some damage to the tower. Like, just walking past this wave... And into some fight is like... And also, what what fight is there even to take? Like Gyro, I mean, Bat is zero HP, zero mana. Naga zero HP, zero mana. Gyro is like half, no ult. So what what kind of fight are you even like walking into? Even though Bane is no ult and they have no ults, you know what? Like see, again this this is how it happens. Like this is even like I I thought people this had like legend bracket, but. Here's pretty much the same stuff. Like, realistically, there should be no way that this Jug dies, right? Because the only cancel for Spin TP is uh, Ensnare and Lasso. Right? Uh, so if he spins TPs, or even just spin walks away, no way he dies. But he still dies because... Why? Like, some retarded reason, which basically him... Like, this is pretty much the only way he could die is by st standing right next to the fog so that SK who doesn't even have blink can get the epi burrow like SK without blink and level 3 burrow gets the epi burrow a jug and the gyro even shows himself in advance and still like it's just it's so ridiculous like exactly and I mean, it's not about just NA, like, I mean, this happens in any server, uh, almost any level. The point I'm trying to make is, this kill, okay, for A, it shouldn't happen. Whether you're there or not, it shouldn't happen. And if it happens, it's gonna be because of some stupid reason like this, which, again, it would happen without you dealing it, and which is the case, actually. You got nightmared, and they killed him without you dealing any damage whatsoever. So the point is... You being there or not doesn't change anything, right? Because if he spin TPs, he's gonna live, uh, even though you're there with the, some aura and right clicks. And if he does this, like the only, like the worst, worst possible play, the only way he can possibly die, he does that, and then he dies again, whether you're there or not, because you were a nightmare, you weren't there. So now imagine, in this time, you were actually pushing mid. Like, the, the jug dies, the others are being chased, like, doing random stuff, running into each other or whatever. It's a free mid tower, you could probably even damage the tier 2, like, then they're gonna start spawning. TP, you walk top, you, you damage that, you, you get so much farm. But, instead, like, you're just running with the rest, and, like, chasing for kills, like, like what do these kills lead to? Like, you're gonna get the bane here, and what is the result? That like you kill the bane and the pangolier, and now you have to push waves again. You got some money. You get more money from actually pushing the waves. And like, what do you do after the kill? You go and push the waves, except it still doesn't work because you know they're respawning. It's early game. It's 15 fucking minutes in. So in the end, like you could also just skip the wasting of time and you know slowing down your own farm and everything and just go for the wave straight away and again like your team is gonna do these stupid moves but that doesn't mean you have to follow them and and then you also see like why I disagree with this item choice because like what does the Dragonlance help you with, with doing what you want to be doing which is, which is pushing waves and applying pressure like there's no way that you can suddenly kill because you have a Dragonlance um, the way it used to I can think about why it used to be really good on SF and a bunch of heroes is because of the range like obviously it lets you hit towers easier so you could five man with your team and hit a tower but if you're gonna be hitting towers in a game like this it's not gonna be five man with enemies watching it's gonna be alone while the rest is fighting So in that sense, the Dragonlance doesn't do anything for you. But I just want to point out like how every single one of these fights is so stupid and with zero logic. Like they they use Lasso here to kill the to kill.
kill the DK. So now, Lasso on cooldown, Fireflies on cooldown, and Naga smokes. So what what is the play here? You know what what are they gonna do with this smoke? Is there's just there's no thought behind it, and there is no good outcome to this. Like the good outcome was here, they got the kill. All right, awesome. And now they need to push the wave, which SK is doing. But what is this smoke? You know, like it, it's NA. It's even if something works out, like even if again someone a jugger forgets to press spin and he dies somehow, like. You're all gonna be low HP from because there's a random fight again, and you're not gonna be able to really get much done. So again, like if you wanna, this is like a really high of our game too. Yeah, I know. Like it's a bunch of you know top something players, but it's just so it's so silly all of it. Like again, it, it's okay for. A few heroes to be doing to, to be doing these things like making these plays because okay they are creating space they are making the enemy run after them and stuff but that's where it's your responsibility as a position one or two to make sure you're actually getting a lot of farm and pushing these lanes because like again let's compare you know like you're eight one OD is six and five but he's has more net rate like and, and that's really what matters in the end. Yeah. Because he has more, has a bigger impact in fights. Now this is uh, like somewhat SF specific, and it's also the reason why Percy I don't like SF that much in pubs, even though he's really, really strong. Um, but yeah, because a lot of games you like a magic build is not good, so you want to go for some kind of physical build, but. Then you end up in a situation like this where you can't really do much on your own. And see, this is just yet another fight where... I think he tp to this one as well. Yeah, just yet another fight where... Like, if you look at the minimap... <laughs> there's... This is the only lane where they don't have a tier 1. Uh, and you don't have a tier 1 on any lane, so... Neither team actually has a reason to fight here. It's also... Like, Roche is on the other side of the map. There's no towers. So, like, what is the purpose behind this fight? Again, there isn't any. Uh, not to mention, Song is on cooldown before the fight even starts. So, no objective, no alts, zero reason to fight. But you are tipping to it. And again, here we get to this, the point I was making is like, it's much better if you go and push a wave and like force them to move but you cannot do that against the jugger let's say because he is stronger right now like he forces you away from the lane and a big part of that is like items because like these items don't let you really man fight them or you know do enough damage to force them away that's why the the yules is so perfect because okay e even against the jug like let's let's say one of yours with immunity you can't kill him with a combo but you can still shove the wave, like, just the way it works is, first of all, infinite mana to spam raises, to harass him, deal damage to the wave, and the way he threatens you is by running at you, and then he has Omni Sash, so he can kill you, right? And if you have Yules, it has more cast range than Omni Sash, and it's instant, so he can never actually get it off, because you just, you can always Yule him and walk away. You know, if he, if he spins to close the distance, like, even then you can... You can heal him before he gets the ult and, and stuff. But it gives you more speed, so he's not gonna close the distance. Um, yeah, but the reason I didn't go magic build this game was purely because they had junk. I thought it was not as good. Yeah, uh, and that, that's what I mean, like, in general, with the hero being a bit awkward. Like, on paper, I totally agree with you. You know, they have, they have Jug and Pangolier, like, two heroes ago, magic immune. Uh, then your team has, like, SK Gyro, Bat, like, all magic heavy and you know if you have all those things in mind like for sure it's it's logical to go for physical damage but here's where like it's not so much about the type of damage like that is important but what ends up being more important is you know what you can actually do in the game so so yeah that's the issue and and that's why like 
the other thing is like there is no point where magically you like you had some kind of strong timing and you're able to do to get a lot done um, and that's again where like the, the build is kind of an issue so, so see if you like like Sharvi needs a BKB to map like it's pretty much any lineup um, if you like you wouldn't be able to afford it even if you didn't get dragons and going like drums BKB is definitely awkward and again you're counting heavily on your team like you need to force fights you need to win fights and if you don't like you bought the BKB so early it feels really bad etc and that's why generally the the Sanji Asha is like the more common like accepted build because okay it gives you damage but it also gives you that move speed so like being perma hasted ends up being the kind of the, the thing that allows you to play a bit more aggressive and you know not not get picked off even though you're split pushing without any escape items like you're being perma hasted is your escape basically um but yeah like there's no even if you went for that like it would be hard to reach some kind of point where you know, you pop BKB and you're gonna start killing people because, like, how how do you do that? You know, DK is insanely tanky. Um, like, Bane's gonna enfeeble you if you try to. Like, the one thing you can do is, you know, let's say uh, your allies disable someone and then you walk up to to them to do a BKB requiem to blow them up. But even then, they have like two saves. They have Astro and the Sleep. And yeah, there's just there doesn't really come a point where. You can do a lot. That's why, at least with Magic Bolt, you know, you're playing for later on in the game. Like, the one plus is that you have, like, a clear winning condition where you, when you reach 25, you actually have that CDR, which means you can play around BKBs uh, a lot easier. Like, your BKB is stronger than any other BKB cooldown, so, you know, you can use your BKB to force the enemy BKB and then... You have a window where yours is up, theirs isn't, and then you actually have some kind of play options, right? Like the other thing is that you can, it's much more feasible to build Lincolns and with Magic SF. Because, like, let's say you're going physical, you kind of need the Lincolns against Bane, you, you already have damage issues, like dealing enough damage, and if you get a Lincolns which is not a damage item, then you're just like, where, where does the damage come from, right? Whereas at least with magic build you you rely less on items to to do your damage. One of the things I do like about physical, which is another reason I chose chose it this game, which I mean I I, I can see magic being better, but uh, I play a lot of OD, mm -hmm. and one of the things that I find really really hard to deal with is when SFs get butterfly plus like I don't know sometimes they get like bloodborne or Daedalus or yeah yeah they get, they get Butterfly plus a damage item, and if they do get a what's the Bloodthorn, then it's like I have to buy BKB. But if I BKB off the Bloodthorn, then it's like uh, I have to man fight him because I can't astral myself anymore and I can't man fight him anymore. Yeah, I mean, in that sense, it's definitely like it is good against OD, and like what you're saying is is, is true 100%. Like, I agree, and that's how it should be like in a normal game but you can agree like that this is really a normal game like yeah. this this point i mean we're talking about you know bkb butterfly i uh, let's say not not even bloodthorn but orchid okay and that's on top of the regular items you have before that but you know that's like sf is probably the fastest farmer but still you need like four minutes plus to get all that 30 40 at least um I but Either blinker evils after the drums to so just switch their magic damage. So I mean, yeah, tell me more about that, physical. but but yeah, like it's just uh, this game, it's not even getting to that point. But but still, like, I mean, the, the build is like a whole other topic, but the main thing really is like just your priority of going for kills instead of pushing maybe because like you, you could definitely also win this game with a physical build, but again, your emphasis really should be way more on actually shoving the lanes enough and giving yourself the space and time to to get to that point where you get those items yeah. like now you're actually doing this play like now you're doing the right play but it's just it's so late right like it could have been 
a lot, a lot sooner. And now I realize like you can't join these fights anymore. You don't do enough. But see, this is so good. Like even though now you're super far behind, you're gonna force a guy back. You're gonna create a a five v four. Like like this is literally. I mean, if you think about it, you know, maybe it sounds kind of stupid, but you're literally like insta killing someone in the fight, essentially, right? Because you're you're making them go back. In this case, two heroes. So you literally took two heroes out of the fight alone. Like, no items you have can do that, right? Like, no build. Yeah. Insta kill the heroes. So. And on top of that, you actually did almost the same damage to tier 3 that they did to yours. And this is all in mind that they have a 8 or 10k lead and an Aegis. So your impact with this little move ends up being, you know, like 10 times more than your impact in all the previous fights. Like raising and right clicking, whatever. It's because uh, as a as a meepo spammer, you, it's it's a lot easier to be pushing in the waves and be at fights because you know you have multiple lanes. Uh huh. So like I end up I end up going whatever I'm not meepo I end up going mode like farm or mode fight. <laughs> yeah, uh, still in between. I see. Oh man, this healing ward. It's so much work. It's the same how much the DK tank. Yeah, so really, it's. I'd say mostly what you need is like a. It's a pretty small mindset shift. Like. Mechanics and everything is. It seems like totally fine. Like, it's not really. What you need to be looking at. And. Like, generally, how you approach fights and everything is, is great. But. It's just about, like, realizing that. You know, the game is not about getting kills, and kills are just the the only purpose. You know, the kill is to be able to get an objective after. And if you're not getting that objective, then the kill is worthless. Because again, it's like simple math. You know, how much gold you get for a kill, and how much time you actually take, which is usually a lot. And then you compare that to how many camps or waves you could have formed. I mean, waves are better, obviously. Another thing is uh, when I when I was when I got on the high Mart, there's a high Mart player that added me. He was like 8.7k or something like that, and uh, I was like super stoked that I watched all his replays. Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently, the public opinion of him is like a lot of people don't like him because he picks mid a lot, like every single game, no matter what, he doesn't care. And uh, he plays the same way I do, where he only goes for kills. Where it's more like I, I play the same way he does because I watched all of his replays and try to. Uh, uh -huh. Copy it, but I, I guess that's why he's higher than one, not ever. I mean, it, it's hard to say. Like, there is of course the the next step is you know, I mean, I assume they're getting pretty seriously, right? If you're already this level and you're trying to improve more, I don't know if yeah. you like. Are you is your idea to just always play pub games, or are you thinking of also like trying competitive? Playing I want to try, try competitive eventually, but I'm not. I'm still deciding on it. Kind of. One of the, one of the things uh, was that I played FPL, and uh, I had like a lot of games where I was just I had a million kills and I was destroying, and the admins were like, "Oh, great, we're glad we added you." And mm -hmm. then I came out was playing other positions and like, played roles that didn't have as much kill potential, and I would just do absolutely awful. Mm -hmm. So it was like. It made issues. I could only yeah. play a select few heroes. I could go run around the map killing people, and everything else was not good. Yeah, so it's basically like a very limited playstyle, and the thing that happens again, like if you, so yeah, I mean, like I said, obviously you want to play competitive, so it's important for that to actually be. I mean, being versatile is obviously really important because uh, any decent team like is able to force is gonna be able to force your team into like some kind of situation where you, you know you need to adapt or you're just gonna lose like it's it's pretty simple like just from from drafts you know like there's certain drafts where you know x hero that's supposed to have a good game just is not going to have a good game and you know nothing you can do about that so you can still win the game if you adapt and you know 
play a different hero like a different way so that they can carry the weight or whatever you know like so in that sense um right now you know you're only able to fill one certain niche and like if like if, it, if the game goes your way then you know what to do but if it doesn't it's just yeah uh and yeah. being able to play different roles also so that's so um i think i can play like one or two heroes in every role but mm -hmm. not that much so i mean i think uh like there's a lot of things then to talk about um a lot of it all starts in regards to lineups like you need to understand how lineups work um to understand like which heroes are are good when and also which heroes and with which playstyles and that way um you're gonna start getting an idea of like what your hero is actually supposed to do um by understanding the lineups so um yeah we have we have some time left um i mean i would say like let's let's make a a bit of a plan um but pretty much what i would advise you for right now is uh, yeah like like we can decide on a couple of heroes you can play um i would i would suggest you know they're for bubbles are slightly more versatile and you can get a bit more done with them like you have a bit more options of you know itemizing and stuff because like again shadow fiend is not bad but i i like uh, Shadow Fiend's like one of my more like uh, up there on the list of most played heroes, but I have I these days I pick it very 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 rarely because uh -huh. I lose like every single time I pick the hero. Okay, okay. I mean, actually, on the other hand, maybe that's a good place to start. Then what I would suggest is, uh, do you have a door buff enabled like public? Uh, no, it's private. All right, can't see games like that, but I mean, I can't see your SF games, but so I mean, I don't know. How often you go for what kind of build? I um, usually do the magic builds. Let's see. I can look some. Other, the replay is not gonna be available, but just to see. My last SF game was on the eleventh. Hmm. Okay, this was. Uh, I usually go the magic build. That's that's exceptional. Yeah, I understand. I'm just trying to find the. Okay, this one maybe. And that's the eleventh, like you said. Right. I mean, this looks like a pretty hard game. Obviously, I mean, seeing these cores and stuff, but. Um... Yeah, let's say first of all, just try like a few games um before like next time we talk like try a few games where you shift your mindset no matter what year you're playing and prioritizing creep waves over hero kills um like this is a it, it's not like it's not that difficult of a concept like it might be you know difficult to get into it but the concept is simple and you'll notice that like a lot of the knowledge you already have like you're just basically using it the wrong way let's, let's say it like that you don't really need that much new knowledge or whatever it's just putting it in the right direction so again like the the game is the game is about objectives and and waves like therefore waves like the simplest thing is just creep waves um because that leads to objectives and that leads to like high ground and that leads to the throne and stuff so the way you need to look at things is like how can you like first of all obviously you need you know the the, the base like you need mana region blah blah positioning so you can actually reach the creepers and kill them and then you get to the next point like when there's an enemy hero there like that that's a pretty concentration right like you're pushing a wave and he's pushing a wave like he has the same idea and now which hero is actually gonna force the other hero back you know and this could be and that's where like it's not necessarily about disables or, or catch or being able to solo kill it's just like how heroes work so for example um like zeus is a pretty nice example so zeus is a hero that only deals damage doesn't really have like okay he has some stun you know with the level 20 talent and nimbus blah blah but 
before that point, all he does is deal damage. But as you said, another hero meet on the lane, chances are that the other hero has to back because what he's gonna do is, you know, use the spells from long range, longer range than the other hero has, and then the other hero's half HP. And you know, if they stay still, like cooldown's gonna be up in a second, in like five seconds, and they're gonna die to another bolt and arc and ult or whatever. If they, you know, try to chase the Zeus or like catch him, you know, they're committing very deep. You know, the Zeus can just juke, again, wait for cooldowns, kill them. So what other option is there really is just to run away. Um, so that's why Zeus is like really good in those situations. The same with an SF, like imagine Shadow Fiend versus Zeus. You know, like, uh, again, he does that, you know, you try to raise the wave, but then he just bolts you and, you know, you're half HP and then he arcs the wave. And then, you know, you're half HP. Next time, if you try to do it again, he's going to kill you. So, you know, you, you can't buy, like, sustain items aren't really a thing on a Sif, right? Like, one way to deal with that is to have super high region, like have a hood and a dominator, like like being a Lycan. You know, hood dominator works on Lycan or pipe dominator, but it doesn't work on SF. So you can't sustain through it. Now, you can have these items, which you have here, right? Like BKB use blink. So what is your way to deal with that is to uh, spot the Zeus before he spots you, before you use any spell to cancel your blink. Blink on top of him, then Yule him, and then BKB because someone else might interrupt it and be nearby, and then ult him. See, like, it's a super massive commitment of, like, three... You need three items for that, like, almost 10k gold. And that's assuming that the Zeus has nothing, like, no counterplay. Uh, you know, Zeus can have his own Yules, and he just heals himself, dodges your ult. Um, you know, anyone can TP, interrupt, and then kill you, and blah blah. But the point is, you're the one forced to jump him, uh, because otherwise, he's just gonna zap you. And and in terms of, again, you can't sustain through the damage. Like, you can't pop BKB every time he bolts you, right? So... Uh, so I'm, that's what I'm saying, like in this way you need to like think about heroes, and that's why, for example, uh, with magic build, you know, the use allows you to keep your distance, um, if you just have, like if Zeus doesn't have that many items, it's earlier in the game, and you have like Bramble's use, then chances are, you know, he's, he's gonna be closer to the wave, like let's say his arc is lower level, he needs more arcs to clear the wave, uh, he doesn't have a lens or whatever, and his teammates are less mobile and that's when you can apply the pressure like that's when you can uh shove the wave and threaten solo kills and he needs to have two heroes with him and stuff um all right all right well one, one more thing i can say like the last thing for now is uh, what i was mentioning about the tps that's like related to this concept is you, you pretty much have three types of tps um and one of them is super bad one of them is like kind of bad and only one of them is good so the super bad one i'm sure you've done it maybe not often but like everyone does it once in a while that's when you just tp to a shrine to farm camps um and the reason that's super bad is that obviously you're just you're wasting it like you're not the camps are there regardless there's nothing time sensitive and you're just wasting the tp to be somewhere you could have easily walked well, I, I do that sometimes when I'm like split pushing and they go on me and then set TP in base and TP to shrine. Okay, that, that's, but that's not exactly the same. That's when, yeah. Um, that's basically the, the good type of TP. Yeah, so the second type of TP is when the ones you were doing this game a lot, which basically allies get jumped or whatever, or there's some kind of fight and you're TPing to participate in it. Now, or, or let's say what also falls under this type is like a tower is being hit. And you TP to, you know, clear the creeps and save the tower. Like, you kind of have to do it sometimes, but it's still bad, like, that that situation even happened. Uh, that's with regards to the creeps. And with regards to fights, it's generally just pretty much always bad. Because, like, I showed you in this game, these pubs, like, all these fights, they weren't, like, you being there didn't really change much of how the fight went. Because the majority of the fights were determined by something stupid, like... You know, people not using their spells or accidentally stacking for a stun or, you know, like sitting next to the fog like this jugger. Like all these kind of stupid things, that's usually what ends up deciding a kind of a fight. 
and the only time where you have like a decisive impact is when you reach some like specific strong timing like like let's say this game you have the the bkb yules that's a strong timing except they have an enigma so it's still not that amazing like if i quickly look at when he gets bkb so yeah so he got bkb before so basically there was no point where um you have use bkb and he doesn't have a bkb so you can actually target him and they can't do anything and if you jump anyone else uh, he's gonna have black hole so and you can't jump him because of bkb so that's already like a, a close you don't have that timing there um but yeah like majority of fights you're not gonna have a big impact so those tps are also generally bad and then the only good type of tp is what you mentioned is when you force the enemy to tp to react to you so like you force them to make a bad TP, which is like the, the second type of mission, and then you TP somewhere else where now they're unable to be because their TPs are on cooldown because you force them. So that's how you create a situation where there's no one to defend against you, and that's the the only like good TP. Uh, but again, ideally that means actually using that time to push a wave rather than from jungle because you know. If you force them to TP top and then you TP bottom and you push bottom and then the tower is threatened, they have to like run bit from top to bottom and like they're probably going to be split or the tower is going to take damage, you know, and that that's how you're creating opportunities for yourself. But, you know, if, if the wave is at the river on bottom, you push top, they TP, you TP to woods and the bottom wave stays at the river, then they have all the time in the world to def top and then do whatever they want. Because there's no pressure elsewhere. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Okay. I just have to play. I have to play Meepo, but not uh, rely on proof. I have to like use my TP instead. You know. Yeah, basically, be be smart about how you move and and just have this like priority in your head of. Um, it's it's not about uh, gold, you know, because no matter what happens. Like killing a wave is gonna end up being more gold for you than uh, farming camps, even if you don't actually get the last hit of the wave. Like that's the crucial point. Like a lot of people miss it. It's like you don't have to actually last hit the the creeps on the lane. All you have to do is make sure they die before yours die. So bring them to low HP. Like sometimes you're not gonna have like let's say it might be too dangerous to use two raises, or you don't want to use two raises because. Only you can only use the long raise without showing yourself, right? If you use the both raises, like the middle one as well, its range is so short that you have to show yourself while doing it. There's no other I way. I know what you I know what you mean by that. Like, when I'm playing OD before I pick a TP, I always go astral to creep and TP out. Exactly, yeah. And uh, sometimes what you can do with SF is you, you use only the long raise, so the only last hit you actually get is on the range creep, and you bring all the melee creeps to half. So now you're you're missing four melee last hits, but you didn't show yourself, so no one is gonna TP because they don't know you're actually there pushing that wave. No one has the like in these pubs zero chance anyone has map awareness to like have their camera on the creep wave and notice that you know you raised it from the fog. If they don't see you on the minimap they won't they won't know. And then what happens is you have the time to farm some camps, no one TP to defend, then you can show yourself on the next wave. At this point it's already close to the tower they have to start TPing, defend the tower, blah, blah, blah. Like, this is what I mean. So just make that mental switch in your head, like, even if you want to be farmed, because, like, let's say this game, you didn't do any of this, but you still were, uh, you had low net worth because of the towers. So you notice that, like, it's, it's kind of weird, but, you know, you put less emphasis on last hits, but you end up with more farm because just the, the space that you're creating. Okay, so I get it. Yeah, I would say like SF is a is a good you know, not not about here to stick with. So try a couple games of that, and like let's see how it goes. I mean, you you can't like insta pick SF every game, of course. Even if you're like a different hero, the the stuff still applies. I'm just you know mentioning the SF because you know you said you were having trouble winning games with it. So yeah, yeah, and. Uh, yeah, just see how it goes. Let's hope you get some good replays. Okay.
and we can go over it next time. Okay. Uh, yeah, feel free to write down anything in the document. I'll write down some notes as well, like what we talked about now and what we're gonna look at for, for next time. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, unless there's anything else you wanted to ask about now. No, that's good. Alright. Okay, man. Hope it was useful, and I'll. Yeah, I'll just uh, I'll message you. You message me for next time. Okay. Bye. Alright, man. Thank mm -hmm. you.